All right, we are back in the booth this afternoon and what we got cooking is we're gonna do a 2.64 lipless silent night from lurebill.com and we're gonna do it in one of my favorite patterns. We're gonna do a bleeding gizzard shad. Uh, well, my interpretation, I used to fish a Strike King one and man, I used to slaughter them with it. So we're gonna play around and see if we can come up with one ourselves. So what I've already done, I've already painted on um, uh, a base of uh, Audubon White Sealer and I came across with a, another coat of Titanium White Golden uh, to make it kind of bright. And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna put a scale pattern on it and just we're gonna let it just come down a little bit on the shoulders, not a lot, just a little bit to kind of give it the effect. So we'll turn it, I'll try to get this thing turned where you can see it on camera. Um, I've actually got some loofah in one of these knitting wheels, I guess they're called. I don't really know exactly what it's called. So we're gonna load up a little bit of um, carbon black in our gun, because that's the color I'm gonna shoot on top. And get it on in here. And I'm gonna cut my pressure down a little bit to about 15. The reason you already see paint on my napkin is because I've already painted this one time and forgot to hit the <laughs> the record button. So I'm, I'm doing this for the second time today. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I kind of looked up at the end. I was going to cut it off and I hadn't even started it. So it's been one of them days for me. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is when... When I put the loofah in, and you know, some people like to wrap them and clamp them. I'm just not big on that. I've had a lot of trouble. You know, if you use UVLS over it and you clamp it, you're not in too bad a shape. You really won't chip it. But I, I kind of like using this technique a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on there and I'm just gonna let it come down with my hand over the side where I'm wanting it to go. So I'll just build my, build my color up and I'll let it go down the side on this side, and then I'll let it come down this side. I want the top a little bit darker than the sides. So that's it. So we'll take that off and that's what you get. Gives it a real cool look, not hard to do. Um, this little wheel is like a dollar and something at Walmart if you're interested in that. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this really fast because I'm gonna go ahead and put my kill dot on and I don't wanna, I don't wanna smudge my scales. I like to kind of, I don't know, personal preference on me is I like a little bit bigger kill dot. This is not a, not a huge bait. Like I said, it's not even three inches long, but, um, and I could go with a smaller one there, but I think I'm still gonna go with the bigger one. I just like the bigger kill dot better. You got now, the, the tip to this is, I, I'm gonna be using a, um, a gill, well, it's a fin stencil from uh, Whitmore Farm. You got to you got to take it off enough, and I've got black in the gun, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and do my kill dot. You just got to kind of just measure it off. On I can actually set it. I can set my stencil up here on the gill at a little bit of an angle, and just raise it up, and then I can shoot it. You just want to make sure that the stencil is laying flat. Getting a little dry tip, but that'll take care of it. I just like a little bit bigger kill dot. I mean, you may like a smaller one. I like the bigger one. So we're gonna hit the eye. I'm gonna be using a red eye. I'm gonna come out just a little bit on the eye. You can see I already came out a little bit on the side. I don't think I had that one totally flat, but it's close enough. So it's gonna be one, two, between the, between the three and the, well, between the three and the four on here. I can flip it over. Well, now I'm having trouble with this thing falling. All right, 
Let's get this thing on there tight. And what you can do on this, I, I keep a Sharpie in my, in my booth and I can run it over and just put a dot to kind of give me a, a point. That's a little trick that I've used for years. It's not foolproof, but it's really, it's not foolproof, but it's close enough. It'll be close enough for me. I'm having some problems in this. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it out of this is what I'm gonna do. I don't need that right now. So I've got it one, two over, one, two over. I mean, it's not gonna be all the time, just line up just perfect for you. I wish it would, but it ain't that way, unfortunately. Let's line it on up. Lay it flat. I think this will do a lot better laying it laying this bait down. Having some dry tip issues here. Alright, so I'm going to set that down, and that's pretty close, and I'll hit this eye. Set it up here just for a second. Whoa! Get these gloves on a little tighter. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and clean the gun. And I'm gonna give you another little tip. I don't, I don't like. I'm, I'm gonna be using some Wicked Red on this, and I don't all. I don't like to reduce a lot when I'm shooting through a stencil. I've just had better luck with it. Can't really explain why, but I just have. I've had a lot better luck when I don't. Because, well, for one thing, I can tell you this. You're, you don't want it to spider web um, when you're shooting it. And, and so what I'll do is, I, the, the wick is a, is, a, is a very thick paint. So I'll, I'll bump it up to about right under 30 just to cover me. And uh, so when I put this on, that I'm, you know, I got enough air pushing behind it to push that thick paint through so what we'll do i've already um i'll show you this stencil this is actually the it's the fins v1 stencil and it's got gills on the top here so what i've done i've just taped it off so i don't get the overspray um all over the bait Put a couple drops in, won't need no more than that. We'll go ahead and test this thing out, make sure it's spraying the way I want it to. And obviously it's it's getting hung up. There we go. It's thick. It's a lot thicker than you think it is. So what we're gonna do, and this is the one I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it, I can see the gill, and I'm just, I just want it to raise up. I just want to make sure that I'm about halfway on it. And I think that's pretty close. I'm not going to put a lot of paint on it. And there you go. And that's about perfect for that. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and heat set this. Okay. And just remember to have a have a towel handy because you want to dry the stencil off because you got to flip it over. And you don't want to put a wet stencil on your bait. So I see about where that's coming. It's going to come down just under the um, gill plate there. And I'll do the same. I'll just flip it around and I'll just line it up. I can about tell where it came down at. 
if I can get it to sit still for two seconds. Yeah, that's the only thing bad about when you tape it off. You can't see very well. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit this real quick. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. Because you don't want it coming out super thick. That was good. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. A little thicker than what I'd want it. Let me dry it off. So we'll set that there. And then I'm gonna show you how, in the original bait, it actually has, um, I'm gonna spray some of this red into here so I got some extra red paint. Yeah, it is popping this, this .18 will not spray that thick paint. It is, and I know that. I just um, probably should have sprayed it out of my HPCH because now I didn't claw my gun up. There we go. Yeah, it'll 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 clog a gun up. That 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 thick paint is not a joke. So we'll let that dry just for a second, and I'm gonna show you another little trick. I've used this same trick before on um Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to clean the gun when I get done spraying today. All right, so I'll go ahead and take that off. And what I've done is on the original bait, it's, it looks just like this, except it's got some little red dots here. So what we're going to do is I buy these at Hobby Lobby. They're just a little plastic stick, and it's, it's like a, it's not a Q-tip. It's kind of like a, some type of a little sponge. I use this on some armor baits I showed on a video, and I don't want it, I'll dip it a couple of times. You just want to make sure that you compress it on the bait to get the circle. So we'll do, we're going to do about five of them. And that's it. We'll let that dry. We'll touch this up just to make sure we don't have a buku ton of paint on it. That one I want to do again. Okay, and they're just dots. They don't have to be dead perfect. But these little sticks, you can get them at Hobby Lobby. They're nice. They're very nice. So we'll do five over here. Let's just see where I started. I started, just did it in a dice shape. It's a little harder on that. And if you're familiar with this bait, it's very, um, <laughs> it catches fish. I mean, it flat catches fish. I've got some oh, ponds around here where I live that they just, they'll destroy it. They'd break the hooks on it when I fished it. That one got a little bit sloppy. Okay. So, what I'll do with that is I just reuse this again. I just stick it in my alcohol and I keep some boiling hot water here and I'll just run that hot water over it and just take all the paint out of it real quick and just let it dry and it's good for the next one. You can use it for your, like I said, I use it for, I mean, I can paint them. I mean, I can take my, my detail gun and I can hit them with it. It's not hard, um, but it's just, you know, I, I try to do it to make it as easy on maybe somebody that's new. Um, if you want to, I, I can, like I said, you can, I, I spray the dots from my, my, my rivet base that I do. You can do that. Now the, the bait does have a red eye. So these, these eyes I've had for a little while, put these in there six millimeter and that's what the bait calls for. And it's almost a perfect match. It looks, it looks really good. So if you're wanting a, a good lipless crankbait color, this is one of them. If you fished this bait before, throw it down in the comment box. 
Let me know what you think of it. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Um, we're going to be turning out a lot of videos. Um, I will come back after off camera and I will spray another coat of UVLS over this before I put my lure build lure coat over this and I'll let it sit. Then I'll post it so you can see what it looks like after it's been completed. But this is my take on the bleeding gizzard chat. I hope everybody liked it. Um, until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks.